Hey friend, welcome back. Today I am going to fill this pouch and create a travel art kit. I'm trying to create something that kind of has a little bit of everything, um, but at a small scale so that I could put this in my bag that I take with me when I'm on the go. This is like a perfect bag to just take with you even by itself. It's got this handy little handle. <laughs> and um, I just think it's also a great bag to just add into your luggage if you're actually going on a trip. Even if I'm just gonna take a few minutes to sit on my balcony, I think this will be a, a great kit for me to just grab um, and not overthink what I'm going to be using. So this is what I ended up with and it's got two um, zippers so it's got this side and it's got this side and so on this side this is kind of like what i would consider the main compartment it's got this flap and then this big open area here i hope that you can see it really well it's got like a nice size open area and i would show you what it looks like with my phone but you know that's what i use to film so i can't do that um, but this is like a travel size like wipes, which I think this is about the size of my iPhone. And that's what it kind of looks like if you want to have an idea about the scale of it all. Um, it's got like this elastic piece here and then this kind of like smaller and bigger, um, bigger and smaller elastic there. It's got this Velcro over here so that when you um, close it, you can kind of secure whatever is back here but you can also use the velcro to secure on this side if that's what you would want to do um it's got space for some pens on this side and it's got a little bit of a, it's kind of tight here but i think that's okay um we'll make some use of it anyway i will say um that i thought it was a missed opportunity for them not to also use this side as a pen our pencil holder area so I'm, I'm not sure why why they didn't seize that opportunity maybe maybe they thought that they had that they had done enough um and i'm over here like um i want more so um and then it's got like this mesh uh zippered compartment here so all in all very good and then on this side um and then we've got like this little pocket here with kind of a flap to contain whatever you might put there and then on this side, we have more room for whatever pens you might use. So uh, let's put this together, together <laughs> uh, first. So for pens, let me tell you what I've chosen. Um, I've chosen my uh, Pigma Graphic One. I really like using a pen like this one. It's just kind of like a felt pen, sort of, um, but these are waterproof. And I like to use these to outline um, some of my illustrations so that I just like that. I like, to me, it looks like they kind of pop off the page. Um, and so I enjoy doing that. So we're gonna take that. I'm also adding the Pigma brush pen. And so it's got like a brush tip and I'm not necessarily intending on using it for lettering, although I could do that. But again, this is waterproof. So I could use this to color in some big sections um, of any kind of illustration. And that will be really helpful for that. I am taking a Faber-Castell pit, uh, pit pen and this is in the extra small. It's a really tiny nib. Um, and that's great for creating some fine detail. And then I'm going to take this uni pin fine line in the 0 0.3 and it's a slightly less small nib. Also waterproof. I really try and, and if I'm, this is mainly going to be used with watercolor. So I tried to select things that play well with water. Um, then I'm also bringing these two Copic multi-liners. I've got a 0.3 and a 0.5. Um, I, these are brown um, or, se or sepia, and I've had these for years, um, maybe like four years or something like that, and I, I have not used them. So I'm putting them in here just so that I can use them. 
and you know sometimes you just need to be forced to use something you have to have a supply visible and within reach so that you can actually use it and i think it's just always good to carry a ballpoint pen i grew up using ballpoint pens and there's something just really nostalgic about writing with one but i love the texture that it leaves on the pages when you turn the page and you just feel like that bumpiness of your letters i don't know there's something really amazing about a ballpoint pen so I'm gonna put that in there and it is also waterproof. Then I'm going to be adding um, a Tombow uh, dual ended Furunosuke. And uh, if you've not seen me talk about these before, the Tombow Furunosuke are kind of like my go-to pen for hand lettering, just like day to day, nothing like super special. Um, and this one just has two sides. One side is black and one side is gray. So you get two pens for one. I'm gonna try and smush it in here if it will allow me to. Let's see. It's getting a little tight, but that's the last one for the pens. So that's okay if it's a little bit tight. In this back flap, I'm gonna totally try and take advantage of it. I'm going to be adding some, they're water soluble pencils. I just tried to pick a range of colors that was like not too repetitive. And we're gonna put those up there. And it kind of works for me that this pocket is pretty tight because um, it looks like those are nice and cozy and they're not gonna go anywhere. We've got that. I also brought this Karan, Karan Dash, or is it Karan Dash? I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but it's also like a water soluble pencil and it's just more kind of like a skin tone, not my skin tone, but a skin tone. <laughs> I need to um, get something that's closer to my skin tone, but I don't just draw people that are my shade of brown. You know, we do, we do various shades over here. Um, so for this section, I'm just gonna do like, it's gonna be like the pencil department, you know? So I'm just gonna have a kneaded eraser. I'm also going to be adding just a ruler just to have like a sharp edge or a straight edge if I need one. And one of my favorite pencils, which is the um, Blackwing. I'm also going to be adding one of these guys. How do we pronounce this? Ticonderoga? I'm not sure. Um, and it's not sharpened, but I will be carrying a sharpener, so that's okay. Um, this one is more, the lead is harder um, than the uh, Blackwing Pearl. It's a pretty soft lead so depending on what I'm drawing I might want to have a particular lead for that all right so moving into the inside I'm going to be adding this art journal which I have yet to create a cover for um, I practiced um, this sort of uh, stitch binding, which I had never really done before, um, but I made this journal myself and I stitched it myself. And it's nice because every spread um, kind of lays flat. You can see that I'm not very, you know, experienced in this because I don't think that I'm supposed to be having these gaps in between some of these pages, but you know, you can't improve in anything unless you practice guys. And I'm just gonna put this here. Then I've got this small watercolor palette that I'll be including here. And as small as it is, it is quite mighty. Um, this is, I don't think it came with anything. Yeah, I think this was just like an extra one that I might have bought, but it's got this little loop so that you can kind of hold it if you're kind of standing and painting, which I never do. Um, you've got plenty of mixing wells and you can also remove the middle and that gives you even more mixing wells. Uh, I don't really do that, but you know, if that's what you need, then that is an option for you. So I actually created this palette by mixing some paints from, I think, two different palettes. And um, this one is just something that came from an old palette. That's why it's loose. I just kind of put it in there. It's fine. And then this is some watercolor that um, I just added from a watercolor tube that I had because I wanted to have black in this palette and I didn't have any. And in the middle, I've got these two mini brushes this one is from jane davenport so it's really convenient for something like this and then this tiny windsor and newton brush came with a different palette but it's really great for detail work um, and it's a great option even to create an even smaller watercolor palette to travel with so i keep those in there and then i also keep a little sponge to use to wipe off some of the moisture or clean my brush it's really convenient 
So we're gonna put that in there. Maybe we can put it this way, I don't know. We're gonna be adding a sharpener and we're going to um, have these Dina Wakeleys go in this pouch. And this is a great tin to create another water palette, watercolor palette with if you wanted to do that. It's so nice and flat. And even this tin itself could become a travel art kit. But, you know, that's a story for another episode, eh? So we're going to put, let's put these down here. I want to cut this off. And then I want to add these um, wipes. You might need to clean your hands, and if you're on the go, you might not have access to things like that. Okay, so I played around with it a little bit because I was a little thrown off by not being able to close it quite well, which made me rethink whether I was overdoing it. Um, but I, I think I am kind of keeping it to the bare minimum with just a little bit of gratuitous inclusions um, but I decided to put my wipes in here with the pencil um, and the eraser and then I opted for a smaller sharpener and just decided to kind of fold over this little plastic thing with uh, the water soluble crayons my sketchbook is still here and then I've got my watercolor that can go this way and I'm going to opt to Velcro on this side. So it's a little chunky, but it's doing it. It's doing it. And now let's go to this side. So I got some new water brushes and these are from Tombow. I've never used the Tombow ones before. I believe I've only ever used the Pentel water brushes. I know Arteza does them. Um, you know, they're varying. There are various options out there. But I wanted to get a set that had different sizes and shapes. So this one comes with a really skinny uh, brush. And then kind of like more of like your regular brush. And I love the way that this looks like a nice little chubby belly, but a really fine tip. Let's see how well that stays in shape once it's wet. A nice rounded belly like that can hold a good amount of water, which means the brush will be wet and saturated for a good amount of time. You won't have to keep wetting it over and over again. Um, and then we've got like a flat brush as well, which I've never gotten a flat water brush before. So I think this would be really great for kind of doing painting bigger spaces. Um, and so really all you need to do is, oh, if you've never had one before, all you need to do is just open it and fill this with water. Oh, and it has like a nice big mouth for filling it with water. And then just screw it back up. And uh, some of the water brushes, as soon as you do that, the brush itself will, will you know, moisten. But um, if it's not, then you can just kind of squeeze it a little bit and then the water will travel to the brush tip and get wet and then you can just go right into painting. It's really convenient when you're on the go so that you don't have to worry about getting um, a cup of water. Um, so if you're just going to like a park or something and it's not really doable or feasible for you to have a cup of water with you, having a full water brush is really convenient. Then I'm also going to be bringing my travel paintbrush just on the off chance that I am somewhere that I'm able to get a cup of water. This is an Escoda um, and the lid has kind of like a hole at the top if you can see that and that allows for air to come in so that your um, brush can continue to dry when you're not using it. And so you just put it together like this and it allows you to have like a the feel of a full handle when really it's just this is the brush. And I believe that this is a size 10. No, oh, nope, it's a size 8, I think. I think that's the size. I can't say it, but I think <laughs> it's either an 8 or a 10. And it's really nice. Um it's got like a really fine tip. Um but it's not too big or too small so it's perfect size i'm going to just slip that into this last spot here i forgot to include my clips 
I wanted to bring these clips as well. Um, but then I'm going to be bringing um, this little syringe. What I like to do with this syringe I'll, is to use it to wet my watercolors. Some people like to use a spray bottle. I don't like to use a spray bottle because I don't like that that wets the entire palette. So let me show you. So some people just like will spray this whole palette and I, I just don't like the idea of like this part being wet, like everything needs to get wet in order for my colors to be wet. So I usually just get a little bit of water and then I just kind of add like two or three drops to each one and, and we're ready to go. That's just the way that I like to do it. You know, you do whatever works for you. I think the spray bottle looks very convenient. I clearly just have a little bit of an obsession with not wetting my entire palette. Oh, now I have a chance to add these clips. Where shall we put the clips? Let's just drop them in there. That will be helpful to hold the pages of my journal down if necessary. Or to clip something else, you never know. And then I like to bring this little booklet. This is actually um, something that Anna made for me years ago. I want to say she made this for me like three years ago and it's just like this like really fluffy fabric and I still use it. I like to use it especially when I'm mixing colors and I test it on this paper first to make sure that I am happy with the color. And so this is these are scraps of Tamoy River paper that I've used to create other journals and I just cannot bear to throw away good paper. And so I keep the Tamoy River paper scraps and I always create smaller journals. Anyway, so this is what I use to um, swatch my color mixes and I think I'm just gonna put that in here. Let's see how well this works, I don't know. And then the only other thing that we need to put here other than our syringe it's just this cute little button that I got at a neighborhood um, art box. There is an art therapy um, place within walking distance and we walked by and they had like this cute little art box and it was just grab whatever you want and they have these cute little buttons and this one says be kind. So that is all that I'm going to put in here. I think that I've put plenty. Oh no, I forgot one thing. <laughs> these crystals. <laughs> um, these are rose quartz and I've had them for a while and I just thought it would be a nice idea to have them in here just for a good vibe. They remind me to be gentler and kinder with myself so if I'm feeling anxious they help to ground me and I think it would be nice to have these in there just to kind of have them in my hand, manipulate them, play around with them, and kind of help my brain go to a more positive place. And now we're truly done. I really love how this turned out. I think um, the true evidence of whether um, I pack the right things will be when I take it for a spin. So I'll have to let you know next time or maybe even documented. Thank you so much for watching friend. I hope that you create your own travel kit whenever you can. I'll see you next time. Bye. After I created this art kit, I got a little bit obsessed. I thought, well, there are gonna be situations when even this is too big for me. And I know because it has happened to me. So how can I create even smaller art kits? And for that, I went on a little bit of a tangent. If you'd like to see what I came up with, then I suggest that you watch this video um, so that you can see how you can create even smaller, more convenient, more compact and accessible art kits to keep you creative on the go.